You may have noticed the top content creators across these platforms tend to have something in common. They tend to be super young, super single. They typically are under 30, single, no kids, and it feels like people over 30 are not represented at the top of content creation, and that could have you feeling like it's too late to start if you're a content creator who's over 30, or you're in your 40s or 50s. And the thing is, it's just not true. A lot of people will take the top 1% of the market, or the top 0.1% of the market, and then use that as an excuse for not getting started or not trying just because they don't see as much of themselves represented at the tippy tippy top as they would like. But the reality is that's such an exclusive market and group of people, whereas in the middle, in the content creator middle class, there's actually a thriving community of people over 30. And actually, if it comes down to something like getting 100,000 subscribers in YouTube, 100,000 followers on a social media account, or more importantly, having a $100,000 a year or more income, you're more likely to achieve that if you're somebody who's in their 30s and 40s in a profitable niche than be an entertainer that gets over a million and is actually making less money because that's something that most people do not understand. The youngest content creators actually don't prioritize and don't care about money and profitability partly because a lot of them are young and single and do not care about those things nearly as much. And yes, I am speaking in generalizations, but if you listen to what a lot of the biggest content creators under 30 say, what do they tell you? Mr. Beast tells you he puts all of his money back into his YouTube business. You don't see him living a certain lifestyle. And part of that is he doesn't have to live a lifestyle that also includes providing for a family at this stage in his life and his career. And a lot of other YouTubers, whether you're looking at, you know, some of the popular streamers or TikTokers, you have to remember that they're still in the early stages of their adult life and that they got to do this without necessarily being burdened with a lot of responsibility up front on top of the challenges of building a career in public. Someone in their 30s and 40s who has lived experience, has had a career before, actually has a really unique opportunity when it comes to the creator economy and being a full-time content creator if they wanna make $100,000 a year. If you're someone in that position and you have either some speciality that you have in your career or you have lived experience that can translate to the people 10 years younger than you, 20 years younger than you, then you can productize yourself and make over $100,000 a year in a much more reasonable way then somebody in their teens or 20s can focus on popularity, pour every single dollar into their content creation and live off of ramen. Younger content creators have the advantages of passion, time freedom, a lack of responsibility, and also their cultural understanding of the largest market of consumers, people their own age. That being said, here are some of the advantages of being an older content creator. I'm 38. I've been doing this for about a decade. I started this, it, like taking it seriously at about 27, 28 years old. So when I talk about this, I'm speaking from experience myself. The advantages that somebody over 30 has when it comes to being a content creator is that hopefully you're not still trying to find yourself. So you have some level of self-awareness and you know who you are. This is gonna give you clarity in life and you will be able to focus a lot more and narrow down to basically either the most interesting aspects of what you do or the most profitable aspects of what you do and what you're genuinely good at. As somebody who's older, you also are used to doing things because they need to get done instead of when you feel like it. So there's a chance that you might, just might, have a higher level of discipline as a content creator and this could provide you some uh, ways to overcome inconsistency based on emotion. Now where you might have inconsistency is other things in your life going on and that lack of time freedom we talked about due to responsibility, but it also could be the very thing that motivates and drives you as you want time freedom, you've experienced working for somebody else. So the thing is you may not have the drive and passion and energy of youth, but you have an absolute motivation based on just wanting a different lifestyle. The other thing that lived experience provides you is it provides you in many cases expertise, specialization, and you already know what you are and what you are not. You know what you are good at and you know what you are not good at and you know what you can self-improve at and you often know what you don't even want to try 
to work on because it's a weakness that just doesn't make sense to mitigate more than focusing on your strengths. And this is why in evergreen content niches, they're more information based and don't have to be over the top. It's going to be more practical. The other thing is if you're an older content creator in your thirties and forties, I hate to break it to you, but the thing is it's going to be much harder for you to succeed in the entertainment categories of content creation. than it is the education portions of content creation, because let's face it, when you're your youngest and you're your most um, energetic and your most attractive, if you're gonna be an entertainer, that's the time to do it. That's why starting young, taking risk, that's what people do and that's why the young people on YouTube succeed, the young people on TikTok succeed and they grow the most. Now that's not to say that there isn't some room for older people who wanna get into entertainment. I just need to be honest and realistic with you is that competing with a younger version of yourself in entertainment is typically a losing proposition because what you have is wisdom, you have experience and honestly, you now can make up for a massive deficit because when it comes to entertainment, it is much less profitable than education when it comes to the marketplace. And that's also because it allows you to monetize and diversify in a lot more ways, in a lot different ways, and usually at a higher value because you're appealing to an older and typically more affluent audience. In fact, it's the reason why this YouTube channel can make more money than somebody getting literally 10 times or up to 30 times as many views as me in some cases. A lot of that has to do with the fact that, well, younger people, they're gonna be into things like TikTok and YouTube Shorts. The monetization on that is about one one hundredth of what it is on a regular YouTube video. Long form content disproportionately out or earns short form content and it's not even close. The number of sponsors that you can get within the realm of education that pay more and will go into long-term brand deals consistently. It's just a better paying gig at the end of the day, nine times out of 10. There are obvious exceptions, but also being one of those exceptions means being typically in the 1% or 0.1% of the market. And when it comes to education and older content creators, you don't have to be in the 1% or 0.1% of the market to succeed and to make six figures. That is one of the key differences that a lot of people take for granted when they're trying to choose what they wanna do because they look and they make the assumption that being popular pays better when actually that's not always the case. You know, famous rapper Timberland said, I'd rather be paid than popular. And I tend to think the older you get, the truer that is. So no, it's not too late for content creators who are over 30 or over 40. The main thing you need to do is capitalize and consolidate on your strengths. And you know, again, you have to have some humility and some self-awareness and consider that there are arenas where competing with your younger self, a younger you, is a losing proposition. And from my experience and perspective, that's for a lot of you who are entertainers. I think if you're 30, maybe you don't necessarily become successful starting a gaming channel. I know you might've been passionate about it your whole life growing up. I know you might have been dreaming of doing something in the gaming space for the last 10 or 15 years. Problem is, there are going to be a lot more things in the next five years that can put you in a much better life situation, help you get rid of some debt, help you provide for your family, take some of the stress off in terms of your bills. You have a better option in terms of a five-year plan, probably not doing that because of the level of difficulty to compete with a younger version of yourself and also the lifespan of that career as you get older and as you are not as relatable or relevant to the majority of those consumers who are going to be 20 years younger than you. I know that sounds harsh and you can feel free to be the exception to the rule and prove me wrong and be the 0.01% of people whom are able to pull that off. There are areas of entertainment where age is less of a factor or barrier to entry, I would say the television and movie review niche could be that. I also believe that you can lean into reaction content as a professional. You see doctors and lawyers and many other career professionals that actually can lean into entertainment because they combine their experience and expertise and then deliver it in an entertaining way in a format that matters when it comes to that expertise, aka things like the reaction format. I've seen everything from surgeons reacting to literal uh, anime you know, feats and injuries in series like, you know, Baki on Netflix and things like that and do very, very well. 
We obviously have people like Dr. Mike, who's been able to get to like 10 million subscribers doing some combination of education and entertainment from the perspective of being a doctor. I would say that leans much more toward the entertainment value than people trying to actually learn about health and wellness and medicine, but they do gain some education out of it. But the priority is being accessible, entertaining, and making people uh, who want to see something very interesting. You're doing something specifically for the purposes of getting attention while leveraging your profession in that situation. Same thing with great channels like Legal Eagle. And this is where you have exceptions to the rule of people who as they get older, their ability to compete in this marketplace doesn't necessarily diminish, but that's because of very specific things that pertain to their lived experience, their expertise, and to some extent, their attractiveness. So if you're a content creator over 30, my advice is to not compete with the 20 year old version of yourself and to capitalize on what is going to work, not only at the current age that you are, but what's gonna work in your 40s and 50s as well to make this a career that lasts over the next 15 years. Plan this idea because you are older with 15 years in mind, 10 to 15 years in mind, because that is what a career will look like. Treat this with the respect of a career, plan for the long game, and play to your strengths in the market. And also focus on niches that have more profitability for you that realistically, realistically leads to the lifestyle outcomes that you need and that your family probably needs. If you enjoyed this video, I have an entire playlist that every content creator needs to watch. I'm gonna to link to that in the description below. Also, you probably wanna watch this video on the most profitable niches in YouTube. As always, thank you so much for watching and don't forget, go out there and create something awesome today. Take care.